Hello and welcome to Counting Rocks, an introduction to combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite sequences of numbers, the Catalan numbers. Let's first recall the counting problem of counting paths from one quarter to another in a grid that only go up or right, if you start at the lower left and go to the upper right. These correspond to directions, up, right, right, up, up, right, right, up, right, up, in this case, corresponds to this path. And so the way to count the paths from one corner to another is by saying, okay, we have to go in this case up five times total and right five times total. It doesn't matter what order you do them. So there's 10 choose five of these direction words because you choose which positions have the right steps, for instance. And so there's 252 words with five R's and five U's and these correspond to the 252 paths from the lower left to the upper right of the five by five grid. Now let's consider the following variant. Say you're not allowed to go below the main diagonal. So you have a square grid, always, five by five in this case. So in the previous problem, we were allowed to have a rectangular grid. Here, we're only doing square. And you want your path to still go up and right, and it can bump into this diagonal, but it can't cross over below it. So now you still have up and right paths, but they have the property that the number of U's you read at each step up to each point outweighs the number of R's or at most it can tie. For instance, u, u, r, u, r, r, at this point it has three u's and three r's. That corresponds to when we hit the diagonal. So then you have to have a u after that. Succinctly, we can say how many words of five u's and five r's are there such that the number of u's up to any point is at least the number of r's. This is called a ballot word because of a story about voting where if you have a tie vote with a bunch of people voting for candidate u and a bunch of people voting for candidate r and they're going to be tied in the end, what kind of ways can the voters line up so that it looks at each each step like u is ahead. And these correspond to these paths that aren't allowed to go below the diagonal. These paths are called thick paths. So the Catalan number c sub n is the number of thick paths of height n, or the number of ballot sequences of u's and r's of length q n. So let's look at the first couple cases. If you have a zero by zero grid, there is one possible path, and so the Catalan number c sub zero is one. For a one by one grid, you have to stay above the diagonal, so you have to go up and right, not right and up, and so there's only one way to do it. For two by two, you can write them out. Either you sort of zigzag or you go straight up and over. So there are two possibilities. And for three, it already gets quite complicated. So we can either zigzag fully, we could zigzag once and then go up and over. We can go up and over and then zigzag. We can even do this funny little M shape here that never really touches the diagonal besides the first and the third point, or you can go straight up and straight over. When you count those up, there are five possibilities. One, two, three, four, five, and so C sub three is five. After that, it gets much more complicated very quickly, 14 and 42, and beyond that, it gets into the hundreds. So the Catalan numbers grow very fast, and they're a very interesting sequence. They have some nice formulas, and let's just dive in. So it turns out there's a recursion for the Catalan numbers. Let's let k be the height of the first return to the diagonal of your thick path. So in this picture, k equals 3, because at height 3 in the grid, we've returned to the diagonal for the first time after 0. When you consider the first turn at return to the diagonal, say we consider all possibilities that return at height k, well then how many ways can you return to the diagonal first at height k? If you draw a little red line one diagonal up from the yellow diagonal, then you can see that since we haven't touched this yellow diagonal and anywhere in between step one and step k, we actually have a little two by two square in here in which we have a path staying weakly above the red diagonal, which corresponds to a c sub k minus one count. So we have a Catalan number of ways of going from the lower left of the red diagonal to the upper right of the red diagonal, which stops at height k. And those correspond exactly with the ways of getting to point k comma k that don't touch the yellow diagonal. So we have a c sub k minus 1 ways of getting to point k comma k, and then c sub n minus k ways of doing the rest of the sequence, because we could touch the diagonal n, we might don't have to, it doesn't matter, there's c sub n minus k ways to, of getting to the top of the grid. So for each k, we have c sub k minus 1 times c sub n minus k possibilities, and we sum this over all k. So c sub n is the sum as k goes from 1 to n of c sub k minus 1, c sub n minus k. Here's an example in practice. c sub 5 is c0, c4, plus c1, c3, plus c2, c2, plus c3, c1, plus c4, c0. So you take all the ordered pairs that add up to 4, which is 1 less than 5. And that's another way of thinking about this recursion. Let's look at this recursion in practice again to get the next Catalan number that we couldn't calculate out by hand as easily. So another way of writing the recursion is c sub n plus 1 is the sum as k goes from 0 to n of c k, c n minus k. Again, pairs that add up to n, which is 1 less than the n minus 1. 
So if C0 is 1 and C1 is 1 and C2 is 2 and C3 is 5, what's C4? Well, we can use a recursion. C0, C3 plus C1, C2 plus C2, C1 plus C3, 0. That's 1 times 5 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times 1 plus 5 times 1. And so you take all these pairs and you add them up and you get 14. That is much easier than writing out 14 dictats. So this recursion saves us a lot of work. Now there is a way of finding a direct counting formula as well. How many words of n u's and n r's are there, such that the number of u's up to any point is at least the number of r's? Remember these words correspond to these dictats that we're counting. So for n equals 2, let's write them out. You can either do u u r r or u r u r. That corresponds to those two dictats of height 2. Now let's overcount in general. How are we going to determine how many of these words there are? We're going to overcount by appending an r at the end of each of these words and considering all the cyclic shifts. And that's going to make it symmetric again so we don't have this pesky condition about the u's outweighing the r's. So here's these two words with an r appended at the end, u u r r r and u r u r r. So now there's three r's and two u's. And what that means is that since there's one more r than u, every cyclic shift of this word, so here's the five cyclic shifts of the first word, every cyclic shift is different. So you don't overlap or anything. If you shift the u around to the right, you'll get u r r r u, and then you take this u and you put it on the end, you get r r u u, and, and so on, r r r u u, and so on. You keep taking the first letter and putting it on the end, and eventually you wrap around to the beginning again. So this first row is one cycling of one of these words, and then the second row is all the cyclings of the next word. You see that there's 10 total, which is the total number of words with three r's and two u's. In fact, every possible word appears in exactly once here, because you can actually show that any word has a unique way of cyclically shifting it to get the number of used to always outweigh the r's before the very last step. So I'm not going to go through the entire proof of why that is, but you can just believe that this is all 2n plus 1 choose n words with n plus 1 r's and n u's. And we've overcounted by a factor of 2n plus 1 because 2n plus 1 is the length of this extended word and it's how many times we do the cyclic shift. We only want to count the yellow ones, so we take the total ones here and divide by 5, and that gives us our 2. In general, we take the total 2n plus 1 choose n and divide by 2n plus 1, which is actually equivalent, you can also write this as 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n. But the point is, either of these beautiful formulas are explicit formulas for the Catalan numbers. The interesting thing is, these explicit formulas are not easy to guess from the recursion. Not only are they not easy to guess, they're not easy to check that they satisfy the recursion. If you try to plug them into the recursion and simplify, it's very confusing and you can't just do algebra to simplify it and see easily why these satisfy the recursion. So the combinatorial proof is the more direct way of getting the explicit formula, and we also have a different combinatorial proof for the recursive formula. So the Catalan numbers are quite intricate. My favorite thing about the Catalan numbers is how many things they count. So they don't just count dictats and ballot words. They also count triangulations of an n plus 2 gon. A triangulation is a way of drawing diagonals in your n gon, here in this case a 7 gon, so that eventually you've broken it up into entirely triangles. And there's lots of different ways of connecting these numbers 1 through 7 in order to make it all broken up into triangles. The number of ways of doing that is the Catalan number C5 in this case. It's also equal to the number of young tableau in a 2 by n diagram. Here's just one way of filling is 2 by n grid with the numbers from 1 to 10 in this case, such that the numbers are increasing going to the right and increasing up each column as well. It also counts binary trees. It, in fact, it counts binary trees on n plus 1 vertices. How many ways can you sort of make a binary tree where every node has either 0 or 2 children, such that the leaves, the ones at the bottom of the tree, are and there's exactly n plus 1 of them. And it's also the parentheses of n plus 1 things multiplied together. So here's a way of fully parenthesizing the computation of a times b times c times d times e times f. What order do you do those multiplications in? And that ordering um, is determined by how you put the parentheses. The number of ways to put the parentheses is also the Catalan number C5. There's so many other interpretations of the Catalan numbers out there, and they seem to just pop up everywhere in mathematics. Sometimes I'm doing a problem in a completely different area of mathematics, and I find a sequence, and it's the Catalan numbers, and I realize, ah, there must be some bijection with dick pads, or some binary tree somewhere, or uh, some triangulations hiding, and they just tend to come up everywhere. 
So now you try. Show that the number of weakly increasing sequences, h1 through hn, in which h sub i is greater than or equal to i for all i, is equal to the nth Catalan number. So this is just yet another interpretation of the Catalan numbers, and you can do this by finding a bijection with dick paths. So these are actually called Hessenberg functions and show up in algebraic geometry. So Catalan numbers show up everywhere, and I hope you enjoy. That's all for today, and we'll see you next time.